Hi, this is an update from the last video that I put up. Um, this is just some of the stuff I'm going to be working on over Thanksgiving break, as well as some of the stuff I've already done uh, since the last video. In the back, we have my 1022. Um, I have a, I just put a new scope on it, and which is, you know, no big deal. Anybody can put a scope on a gun. However, the gun that I picked, the uh, scope that I picked, um, and I didn't know this from the pictures, had a little, uh, has this little thing sticking out the bottom of it. I don't know what that exactly is for. But um, it it wouldn't fit. It wouldn't line up with the scope mounts that I picked. And I like a low mount scope. I it's just uh, personal preference. And you know, some some people were like, "Hey, why don't you just put a medium uh, size scope rings on it?" But I like the low, um, the low the low rings. I like having the scope right up here, up against the barrel. And I went to the range, tested it out. You know, no problem with uh, looking through it. It's not too low. It lines up perfectly for me. And uh, so what I did was I just machined this little um, channel in here for it. And I was doing it by hand. And one of the instructors came over and he's like, hey, you're, you're a gunsmith. You know, you, you can machine it. So, and I did and it came out nice. I just have to paint it this week. So that would be the project. That would be one project for this week. Let's do a little night paint job to hide, up, hide that little metal where I cut in. Um, in the back is my Mauser barrel. Uh, what I've done to it. And unfortunately, it's in my uh, toolbox in the, in the school, in the shop. I forgot to bring the cartridge, but the, test fired it. Uh, I chambered this already up. I chambered this up, reamed it out, and test fired it. Worked out great. Um, there was The brass didn't look weird or anything. That's, that's another reason you test fire it. One is to make sure it's, uh, everything works okay. And two is make sure that you didn't um, deform the brass or, you know, if, make sure your chamber is okay so that the brass doesn't look weird. And I've done this part of it. I've taken it down to where it needs to be. This is going to be a 20 inch barrel. It's measured from the shank to the end of the barrel, to the muzzle. And uh, the next thing I have to do in machine shop is just uh, contour this out and make this into what you would kind of expect to see on a, what a gun to look like. Just a nice contour on there. And right here I've got um, just the barrel stub. This is what I've cut off. Um, and I'm going to probably use it as a muzzle break or some of that, you know, some, at some other point for any 30 kind of 30 cal gun that I have happen to make in the future. Um, and you know, I think I have the shortest barrel in the class, but growing up in New York City, just um, urban environment, I couldn't really, I don't know, the guns I like are kind of more, I guess, kind of what I thought was cool growing up. And this was kind of a leap for me to come out here. So I, I, I'm going to do the things that I kind of like and see what happens. Um, this is the uh, Mauser receiver. And uh, man, I'm, and I was thinking, why am I so behind? And I realized, well, I'm, you know, I'm not that behind, but, you know, I, I need this break to catch up. But one of the reasons was learning how to weld this. And, um, and that took up a lot of time. Also, I'm taking three electives. And so a lot of guys aren't going to aren't gonna be making a revolver. So that's, you know, and, hey, I mean, I don't mind working extra hours if I'm going to have a cool revolver. Uh, and also the CNC class. So this is a knife I'm designing. So I'll show you, show you that in a second. Uh, actually, I'll show you that right now. Um, this is just the first, uh, first around at it but it's just a knife that I've been kind of been thinking about in my head but I wanted to um, at least cut one out of aluminum and that's what that piece of uh, metal back here that everything's leaning up against is for is just to cut that the first prototype of that knife and uh, I guess once I cut the knife out I'll, I'll kind of explain more my thinking and just reasoning behind it and um, you know they'll be, they'll be around to around three I'm sure just ones I have it in my hand kind of see what it feels like um, this is a 22 short made by Rossi. It's an old school one that I found at a pawn shop. And uh, I'm going to actually, this is 22 short cur currently, but I'm going to ream it out for a 22 long rifle and get um, shot shells for it to make it. It'll be a nice little snake gun for going out in the woods. Um, do that in the future. Got here is a lapping tool that I made, a uh, machine shop. All you do is you just take a piece of uh, bar stock and you cut it up, you drill a hole through it, you bore a hole through it. And then you put rifling on, uh, it's not rifling, excuse me, uh, threading on it. And it's designed to screw, and I've already done this, I've already lapped my receiver, so I don't need to do it again. What it does is it screws onto here, and then you stick a piece of brass through it. And currently, there's some burrs on it, on the inside, just from, I have to clean it up with a file. And that's actually where um, some of these guns that come out now, the the uh, hand finish, I guess, is, is lacking. Some of them are great, some of them are lacking, but that's, I guess, what separates, a, one of the things that separates a quality gun from a, not so quality gun, but um, you know this all has to be. Um, I'm going to do this by hand, just uh, file it, all the burrs off, and make it real nice. But this goes in here. You lock it down with this set screw, 
and then you can lap it, and then you put lapping compound, and you can lap the um, the lugs on your receiver. It makes it real nice, nice and smooth. But I'll be working on the receiver this week, cleaning it up. Uh, while we're on the Mauser, this is the bottom metal. Um, I've been keeping up with all the machine stuff, but in my spare time, uh, I've been just it's been divided, so I haven't had as much time to just um, do the handwork that you're supposed to do in your room. So I'm staying over Thanksgiving break and just catching up. But this will all be uh, filed out and cleaned out by the end of this, by the end of the week. Uh, these are this is the new latch that I made. Um, again, just some final fitting that I have to do on it. But it'll it'll uh, it doesn't quite go in. It's a little large. I have to just polish it a little bit more. Um, but this is the old latch. As you can see, it doesn't have. It's kind of once it's in there, all flush. It's kind of hard to push out. So you put this little hump in it, so you have somewhere to push your hand. You have a easy access to your finger. But it's, you know, it's got sufficient tension that it's not just going to fly off or anything. You, you do have to push it. And that'll open the bottom metal. Um, that'll open the latch here on, on the floor plate, floor plate and um, allow you to open that. Now, this is the revolver that I'm working on. Um, and this week, luckily, I was able to get to the uh, machining of the underlug. So now it's just the fitting. So I have to do it by hand with a file. Uh, but if you, as you can see, it'll go in here, and I have to match the contour of the frame right here at the back of this. And I'll be doing that with a file this week. Just doing that, cleaning up, making this nice nice and polished inside. Um, and then later at the end, you know, when school starts again next week, I will put two holes in here and um, uh, drill and tap here so that it'll fit on nice, cut the excess off, put a nice little angle on it. See what else. This is a buffing project that I have to do for school. Uh, it's a 22, uh, made by Savage, and uh, I pretty much buffed the um, barrel. I, I have to do final. You know, I did the first round. Excuse me, I've done that. But the receiver, I have to do. I have to do some handwork with a file. Uh, I started buffing on it and realized it's a little too uneven. So just clean it up first, and then just to get some of the pits out of it by hand, and then uh, go back to the buffing wheel on it. Oh, this is the safety for my. Um, excuse me. This is the shroud for my bolt. And as you can see, the chat. Oh, look at this wood. Uh, the Chapman is um, safety is is considered one of the hardest to install, and the reason is, is all the machining you have to do on the shroud. This is an unmodified bolt shroud. This is one that that I've I've uh, started working on. As you can see, you grind this off, then you by hand you the the final touches. You blend that in nice, um, and then you take some of the front off with a machine that would with a mill, mill. And then currently, what I'm doing right now is. Everything lines up nice, it fits up real good. Um, except when I turn it, it catches a little bit on that corner. So I am filing that relief in right there, just so it'll turn up nice and uh, nice and uh, smoothly. And this is an indicator holder that I have. Um, these are the dimensions that they give you. And um, it's not complete yet, but what it is, is it holds a dial indicator on your mill so that when you're doing cuts, it just um, you, it lets you measure everything down to the Thousands, thousands of an inch, so gets you, lets you be real precise. Um, and these are just various parts that I have to polish up during the week. But um, you know, looking at it now, it's not might not seem like that much. But you know, each of these is each of these projects is a couple hours. So you add it up all up together. I'll be I'll be pretty busy this week, but I should be able to knock everything out. Um, I also made a cajon, which is a um, wooden box drum, and uh, I'll bring it over here. Um, and uh, actually, I'll, I'll play that. I'll show that at some later video. But anyway, this is what uh, is going to be going on at, with this week at the um, during spring break. And uh, if you guys have any questions, oh, I was going to show some of the gunsmithing stuff, um, and I actually took a ton of video. But however, I, the administration told me I couldn't post anything that of oh, the machines running in school. I don't know; it's a liability issue. So I did ask, and I also asked about the. Um, the um, rifling machine, the reason why no one has those is they cost 30 grand and it's just easier just to go out and buy a rifle, uh, buy a rifle barrel. But anyway, um, I hope you guys like the update. If you have any questions, I'll try to answer them in upcoming videos. Thanks.